All right, so I'm here with Mark Kirk, our forward specialist, and Mark, I'm an agronomist. I cover the whole U.S. I get a lot of questions from a lot of different people, and they're always pertaining to the crops that we sell, our sorghum products, and I'm really comfortable answering their agronomic and product placement questions, but one thing that always escapes me is our nutrition questions yeah. that we get. So can you give me kind of the bullet points of what an agronomist like me and, and those in the audience are struggling with when we go read a nutrition yeah. report. No, that, that, that's a really that's a really good question, Zach. And, and I'm going to warn you, you you're, you're opening up a Pandora's box, right? Uh. And, and and so this is what this is one of my passions, and this is one of the things that I really love to talk about, and I really love for guys to understand. Okay, and and, and the idea there is that you know a lot of times we'll get a, a silage analysis or a forage analysis from a lab, and man, it, it just looks like Greek. It, it yeah. just looks like math. It just looks like it looks like the most complicated algebra you've ever seen. And guys just glaze over. And, and then and then I'll go to talk to an agronomy guy like you, uh, Doctor Eater. And 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 by the by the time I get three or four minutes into it, they're glazing over. And, and so I'll get I'll give you my top my top four: crude protein, NDFD thirty, UNDF two forty. Okay, and and then and then sugars. Those those are my top four that they need to be looking at. So, Mark, two of those I'm familiar with, and those are our fiber digestibility scores. Sure. So, which customers of ours in the audience are really going to be needing to lean on those, and what kind of value should they be looking for on the actual nutrition report? Sure, that's a good question. So, when when a guy grabs that nutrition report, whether he be a a beef guy or a dairy guy crude protein is going to be one that, that he's going to want to focus in on. You know, uh, most of the time when we're adding protein to a diet, we're either we're either adding uh, maybe some alfalfa to the ration, but definitely soybeans and soybean meal. And, and I don't know about you, but, but soybean meal right now is really expensive. So if we can grow that crude protein in that forage, that's where we're going to really going to want to be. Okay. And so crude protein is going to be one of those places that is, that is going to be um, essential for either one of those two groups to look at. And, and that's one of those numbers that the higher, the better. Okay. And, and, and you know, as an agronomist, how do we get that crude protein up in those plants? Definitely from our nitrogen fertilizer. From our nitrogen fertilizer. And, and kind of one of the, one of the interesting little secrets there is that when a lab is testing for crude protein, all they're really testing for is nitrogen in that plant. And so they're, they're using that to calculate out that crude protein fraction. So as long as we're feeding this plant enough nitrogen, and I think that that's one of these areas, Zach, the, the guys who grow sorghum sometimes think of this as kind of this strong, rugged plant, and I don't have to feed it as much as I need to. But if you're going to grow high quality, high tonnage um, silage, you're going to need to feed it. And, and nitrogen is going to drive that, that crude so protein. So on, on our, all of our agronomic recommendations, we're typically looking at about a 1.25 pounds per growing day in the field. Yep. And that's really going to put them on an optimal uh, maximum use without going over and I, obviously we have some nitrate issues if you go too high yep. but that's a really good cost savings for those growers now when it comes to those digestible fibers though how, how is that what are we looking for there so digestible fiber we're gonna be looking at two fractions there one is the NDFD 30 and that's that neutral detergent fiber digestibility at 30 hours and so when we're measuring that digestibility really what we're saying is there's this much of this fiber that's digestible at this certain time point yeah. okay and so that NDFD 30 on a BMR, we're, we're going to see that in the 60s, okay? okay? And that 60% that of that NDF is digestible in 30, in 30 hours. And that's really where we're going to see that high quality. That's kind of the metric for those BMRs. Now, a conventional non-BMR, we're probably going to see that in the, in, in the mid-50s is, is where that's okay. going to be. And that's where we're going to want that even for a high quality non-BMR forage sorghum or, or sorghum sedan or, or sedan grass. That, that's where that one's going to be. And then the other fraction that we want to look at is called UNDF 240. Okay, And UNDF is the undigestible fraction. So that's the part that the cow is not being able to utilize. That's the part that the cow is absolutely not going to be able to utilize. But not only is that, as we think about it, as waste, right? She doesn't utilize it. She doesn't do it. But it limits. Um, the higher that number goes, it really limits the intake that they can have, whether it be a dairy cow or 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 a or a grow and steer or even a, a mama cow that uh, for beef that we're looking at. If, if we get that number much above ten or eleven percent, 
what we're really doing is, is she's going to only eat so much of that or a growing steer is only going to eat so much of that, they're going to get full and they're going to quit eating. Okay. So the lower we can keep that fraction, the lower we can keep that UNDF 240, uh, the better off. And the more we're going to drive that dry matter intake and have increased average daily gains for the beef guys and increased milk production for the dairy guys. Now, you mentioned sugars, and I do get a question about this a lot. Yep. A lot of the growers out there are maybe looking for a high energy food yes. uh, to give to some, uh, some of their different feed scenarios. Where are our growers utilizing that higher sugar and what products should they be looking at for sure, that? Sure, absolutely. So on, on that forage analysis, first of all, there's going to be one of two ways that that's going to be represented. And either it's going to be represented as ethanol soluble carbohydrates, ESC, or, or it's going to be water soluble carbohydrates, WSC. I prefer looking at the WSC. It, it, it's really what's more soluble, okay? So that's what's soluble in, 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 in water, and that's what's gonna be rapidly available for energy for, for those animals. And, and, and one of the interesting things is, Zach, you know agronomically that, that when, we grow, when we grow sorghum, uh, it's hard to sometimes compare it to corn silage, right? Very much so. And, and, and a guy's gonna be like, well, that doesn't have as much energy but they're usually looking at that starch energy and that starch value is going to be lower in a in a, in a forage sorghum just because we don't have that ear of corn but what this forage sorghum is going to bring is the sugars and that's the energy that it's really going to be able to make up for some of that starch that 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 we're losing out on in uh uh without growing corn silage and so so a guy there and and so those numbers uh, are going to be are going to be different. The ethanol soluble carbohydrate is going to be different number and typically a lower value than the water soluble carbohydrate. But really, it's the higher we can get those, the better it is, and the more energy there is rapidly available to those cows. So it sounds like products that we have in the lineup that don't produce a lot of starch, a lot of grain, are going to have a lot more of this WSC, the water soluble yes. part of the plant. Which of those products are you looking at in your rations to, to kind of favor? So uh, a lot of those would be the photo period sensitives, okay? Because what we know is that a plant begins to basically take up those, um, those sugars out of the plant and deposit them in the head and make it starch. Any grass does that. And so anything that, that, is, that is longer maturing in, in that way. But one of the things that I, I wanna make sure that we're cautioned about is even though we're putting on the starch, right? Even yes. though we're putting on the starch, this plant, this plant is still alive. This plant is still photosynthesizing sugars, and there's still a lot of sugars in that plant. Okay, and, and so, but a guy who really wants to optimize that uh, really needs to kind of be looking at either a photo period sensitive or, or taking their sorghum sedans in a multi cut instead of just letting it go to maturity and putting on a head. Taking that in a multi cut, we typically say the rule of thumb there is 40 days or 40 inches going in and cutting that, and, and you're really capturing all of those sugars without them being uh, cannibalized out to starch. In summary, we need to be looking at uh, crude protein, NDF D30, UNDF 240, and sugars. So Mark, I'm glad we got to do this. I know it's a lot of information, but the beauty of video is you can watch it over and over and make sure we learn these principles of nutrition. It's the biggest challenge in growing forages today. So I'm glad we got to do this, and I'm glad the audience got to hear it for the first time. Thank you.